on the Freemasons in order to interest in schizophrenia. And, and he brings up a, an example that there's numerous Masonic clinics uh, in, in the in the U.S. and maybe even elsewhere dedicated to its uh, investigation and, and treatment. So this person wonder if you have, have any thoughts on that. No, I've, unfortunately, I can't help your listener, but uh, what he says fascinates me because I am quite interested in the Freemasons and also, of course, very interested in the problems of the mind of schizophrenia particularly. Yeah. Do, do, so if you can send me some more sometime, you know, maybe drop me an email about it, I'd be most grateful. All right, there you go. And and uh, what about schizophrenia then, in, in that sense? What, what is it that have interested you in regards to, to that? Well, no, schizophrenia interests me quite simply because, to a large extent, we're all schizophrenics. <laughs> um, schizophrenia does not mean, of course, a split personality like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It means simply, basically, a certain separation from reality. Yeah. Now, good Jeff once said that this was the basic problem of human beings. Yeah. That what was real appeared to him as unreal. He said that, in fact, we have a particular organ inside the head, which he called the organ kundabuffa, whose purpose is to make us see reality as unreality. <laughs> so, in a way, your question about schizophrenia is absolutely spot on. I mean, Gurdjieff spent his life talking about it. It's. Uh, do you think that we we have been, um, in some way, our, our brain, if you will, or mind, have been split up? Then, in that sense, that we we are we're hardwired almost to have two different personalities. We have the obvious one with the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. Um, it's 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 as easy as that, so to speak. But many people argue that we humanity at, at large have been traumatized. Uh, and therefore this compartmentalization have occurred where we have multiple personalities uh, already when we're born, so to speak. Uh, would you agree well, with that, Colin? Have you heard about that before? Well, yes, and of course, I've also written about this whole idea yeah. of the, the left and the right brain and the fact that we appear to have two completely different halves. And of course, um, anybody who, like myself, um, is a writer and relies therefore to some extent an inspiration is aware of this, the way that these ideas come suddenly walking into your head from somewhere completely unknown. <laughs> Mozart said it was always happening to him. I, musical ideas would walk into his head already fully created. <laughs> so, but I think you, um, you don't have to be a Mozart to get this. You simply have to take a direction. And the direction you have to take is the one that you and I have been talking about yeah. for the past three quarters of an hour. Yeah. Once you've got it, once you realize that this does exist, this direction, once you realize that the question, what should we do with our lives, is a real question, yeah. then suddenly everything begins to change. It's a really good mantra, as it were, uh, what should we do with our lives. And I think um, I want to fire off a last question here to you, Colin, uh, in the first uh, for for the first hour here, we can round things up, uh, and then we can talk more later on in, in our second. But basically, it has to do with the creative force and, and what you think that that is, because that's, that's been a, a question that is interesting to me um, as well. I, I'm a musician, among other things, and, and I've been wondering where where does the idea of, of music and, and the tunes come from? Are they are, are they simply a collection of things that I've heard previously in my life, and now I'm com picking parts here and there and... and putting them together in my own head, and now I think it's mine and original? Or, or am I tapping into uh, the mind of God, if you will, or another force that is working through us, through humanity, to put these ideas out there? Well, what is your belief and, and, and thoughts around this, Colin? Well, I think we've been talking about this to a large extent. That is to say, these um, the things that suddenly enter your head um, as new as, as something new and strange, um, are things that um, they were not only already there, but they're there all the time, which means that if we wanted to, we'd simply plug into them. We could simply switch onto them by switching a kind of mental switch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. More and more I become convinced of this. I've got here at the side of my bed a book called Megabrain, 
by a man called Michael Hutchison, um, who has made the same discovery, that the brain appears to have all kinds of weird capacities, which are not at all difficult to switch on. Hmm. That's really interesting. Um, Colin, I, do, I want to ask you as well here uh, as a way to... To round things up, uh, if, you, if you have a personal website, I know that there is uh, some fan-based website out there. For instance, uh, colinwilsonworld.co.uk, that's that's one site. And there's yes. others out there as well, which have details about your books, your, your biographies and so forth. But do you have a personal one uh, out there yet, Colin? I don't think I do. People ask me now and then to join, I don't know, these... Um, these uh, websites that I don't know very much about it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, really, if you're like me and you're working all the time, <laughs> you don't really have much time for messing about on websites. As it is, I get so many queries that come to me via my website that I have to put that by about an hour every day yeah. just to reply to them. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Too much, too much of work in that sense. Well, in any regard, what, what we can say, obviously, is that your books are w uh, widely available. Uh, Amazon.com obviously carries uh, probably all of your titles, if not most of them anyway. But is there any other uh, sources out there that you'd like to mention for, for people? Well, uh, I, always when I want to get hold of a book, even one of my own, I look on ABE Books, which, of course, is on the web. Yeah. And you can get most things on it. A B E books. That's one word. Yeah. All right. Excellent. A B E books dot com. Uh, we can definitely link that up as well. Um, and obviously, you, I want to mention your your what's your latest title is called the Super Consciousness. Is that correct? Super Consciousness. Yes. It's a book that I wrote last year. And how how is how is that uh, uh, going as well, Colin? Are you are you working on new material all the time? Are you currently working on something new as well, or, or are you taking it easy right now? No, I, I'm working on something all the time. Um, actually, I spent quite a, a bit of time in the past two years writing a big book about Shakespeare and about the Shakespeare mystery. That is finished, but unfortunately, at the moment, I haven't found a publisher for it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and. Um, also, I've written a big novel about vampires, um, which also is still waiting for a publisher. This is partly because, of course, with the recession, it's more difficult to find publishers. Yes. Well, plenty of material out there, obviously, and 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 again, you're continuing continuing your your work, which is which is excellent, and it, it's. Uh, Vital and and it's so interesting and and again we've just obviously scraped on the on the surface here as it were on some of your some.